What's up YouTube? It's your boy Fly JP and I'm back with another video. Now in today's video, I'm going to be giving you 10 signs that you are a good airline pilot or that you will become. Thank you for tuning in. Fly JP forever. Let's get it. So first things first, this list will be made up of two different categories, hard skills and soft skills. So first things first, hard skills, what it means is basically all the skills that you acquire as part of your training as an airline pilot. So it's the skills that you will be learning at flight school during theory, during flights, during your line training and during your time as an airline pilot in an actual airline. Soft skills, on the other hand, are the skills that you have inside of yourself. It has to do with your personality and who you are as a person. Now you can work on these skills, but most, most likely they're going to be more in it than hard skills, for example, that you can learn progressively through your training. Number one, good educational background. It's very important as an airline pilot to have had a good educational background throughout your life. Okay, you will be going through school and having a scientific background is definitely something that you can apply later during the job. So it goes a long way to lay the foundations you will need to be a good airline pilot. Things like trigonometry, solving equations, and just the general problem solving skills that you will get from physics and math will be good and will actually go a long way to put a difference between you and the average pilot. Okay, now it's the thing is the technical outlook you will have from this background that you have in education from science from physics from math etc will make you a lot like more perceptive and quicker when it comes to learning aviation concepts theoretical concepts about everything that you do in the cockpit and everything about aviation in general number two a good flight training now just like number one this training is neither a hard skill or a soft skill it is just part of your education as a pilot now there are a lot of flight schools out there, okay, but it is very important for you to realize that they are not all created equal and that you have to make the right decision when picking one. Flight schools in general will be the ones to lay the foundations of your knowledge to become an airline pilot. But at the end of the day, it goes deeper than that. How much knowledge do you actually have and how equipped are you actually to become an airline pilot and join your first airline? How experienced are the instructors, okay, how much attention is given to the individual student? and how much emphasis is put on knowledge versus just knowing how to answer and which boxes to tick. Okay, this all comes into play when you have to make your decision. Now you have to weigh the pros and the cons, you have to look at your finances, but chances are if you're looking at a school that nobody has ever heard about, it's probably not a good school. Reputable schools are reputed for a reason. Now number three is team-oriented spirit, and that is a soft skill. The reason being team-oriented and being a team player is so important in aviation is that you are never alone. The key word in aviation is redundancy. You work with other people all the time. From the moment you board the aircraft, you are with cabin crew, you are with the flight crew, which you are a part of, and you have passengers with you who need to be communicated with properly to know what is going on. Now, from the moment you're on the ground, push back, taxi, take off, cruise, and land at another airport, you'll be going through many different air traffic controllers, you will be talking with ground handlers, you'll be talking with so many different people that you realize quickly that you cannot do this job alone. And since you cannot do this job alone, communication is vital. Being able to work as a team is vital and being able to respect other people and their opinions is also important. Now let's go into emergencies, for example. You're sitting across somebody, you are two different human beings, you do not have the same things in your mind, but you have about the same type of knowledge. He misses something, you say your opinion, he agrees, he doesn't, you have said what you had to say. Now, something else, you take off from Africa, you land in Europe, other cultures. Okay, you, land, you, you take off from Europe, you land in America, it's another culture. So you have to be adaptable, you have to be able to learn as you go along, and you might not have that skill right now, okay, but it's something that you can cultivate over time and through being exposed to enough flights, talking to enough people, and you're not just flying the plane, okay, you're also talking through a radio, using proper phraseology and understanding other people around you, being, being uh, exposed to many different accents, and many different tempers and you have to be the kind of person who can just accept that as part of being team play. Number four is leadership. Now that is also a soft skill. 
Leadership is very important as a good airline pilot because it complements teamwork, okay? It is good to have teamwork, it is good to be able to communicate with your team, but as, a, as an airline pilot, you have to be assertive, you need to have decision-making skills for that teamwork to be as effective as possible, okay? Decisions have to be made in a timely manner, and it's time that is critical when you're in a cockpit. Leadership is important. You will learn it over time, but it is something that is mainly part of your personality as well. Number five is situational awareness. Now that is a hard skill that you will learn over time through flying with instructors and being taught just the best way of having it. Situational awareness means you being mindful of your surroundings, your environment, and who you're talking to, what airspace you're flying in, etc., etc. To have situational awareness, you need to be applying a proper scan of your instruments to know which parameters and how are the systems of your aircraft doing at the relevant phase of flight. You always need to know whether or not your aircraft is the correct configuration for the phase of flight that you're flying in. You have to know which airspace you're flying in, who you're going to talk to next, and most importantly, you need to be proactive to be able to prepare what is coming next. Okay, having situational awareness will put your crew member at ease with you because he knows that even if he misses something, nothing dangerous can happen because you are as well situationally aware enough to assure the safety of the flight with him. Number six, a good airline pilot has an understanding of manual control and automation. Now you need to understand that manual control and automation are like two sides of the same coin, they're like yin and yang. If you have manual control of your aircraft and you, and you know how to fly it properly, you also need to be able to switch over to automation, meaning turning on your autopilot and still being able to monitor it effectively enough as if it were still you controlling everything that's going on. Because something that happens a lot of times with people who are flying, for example, for a long time or get used to the environment they're in is they get complacent with the autopilot on and they talk about it in threat and error management. You need to be monitoring everything that is going on because the autopilot is just an instrument used by the pilots to do what they want. It is not something that will solve your problems for you. Now, on the other side as well, if you're using automation and you're monitoring everything, it will help you in case of a reversion suddenly. Like for example, let's say the autopilot fails at some point during the flight. It needs to be seamless, the transition between autopilot and manual control because you've always been monitoring what is going on. So you need to reconcile the two and be able to use them to your advantage. Number seven, okay, number seven, SOPs and their implementation. A good pilot knows his SOPs and the implementation of the SOPs. SOPs are the root of airline flying. When you fly a certain aircraft and you have a type rating on that aircraft, you need to understand all the standard operating procedures, you need to understand the memory items, and you need to be able to implement them in the correct manner. It is useless to know your SOPs and not apply them just because I haven't applied them this time and it worked, so I'm gonna do it again because that will cause accidents. It is very dangerous behavior, okay? So you need to be somebody who reviews from time to time his SOPs and comes back to the aircraft always fresh enough to be able to implement them and not just be used to operating through habits. SOPs and implementation. Number eight is technical understanding of your aircraft and the systems. A good airline pilot knows the systems and knows the technical aspect of his aircraft. The reason for that is this. You will be applying procedures, normal procedures that you will be doing as part of a routine. Now, there will be also emergency situations that you will review during sim sessions when you read the FCOM, etc., etc. And it is important for you to not just be a victim of your own habits. It is important for you to understand the underlying principles and the deeper aspects of the procedures that have been put in place by the manufacturers and the operator, okay? So you have documents such as the FCOM, the FCTM for flying techniques, and the Ops Manual for everything that you will be doing day to day and for things that are specific to your airline. It's important to read these things periodically and from time to time to be able to understand what it is that you are doing, okay? A good pilot does not settle for less and you have people who are willingly putting their lives in your hands and you should be at the level for their expectations to be met. Number nine, a good airline pilot knows how to manage workloads. You are flying as part of a crew and there are two pilots. One is the pilot flying, one is the pilot monitoring. The big challenge with tackling emergencies is this. Emergencies are time critical. Anybody could really solve this using all the proper documentation of the aircraft, 
But the thing about an airline pilot is he knows how to do it in a timely manner to reduce the risks of it becoming lethal. Okay, so it's important for you to know exactly what your role is inside the cockpit. The pilot flying flies a plane, makes sure the trajectory of the aircraft is safe, and occasionally checks in with the PM to confirm certain actions that he is doing. PM stands for pilot monitoring. The pilot monitoring will be pulling out all the necessary checklists, going through them and applying the items one by one. And like I said, it will be requiring confirmation from the PF, okay? It's thus important to know how to prioritize, how to delegate and how to share tasks, all the while remaining calm and composed under pressure. Time is of the essence. That's where workload comes in. Number 10. Last but not least, a good airline pilot reads and logs his knowledge. The thing about being a good airline pilot is this. You always are learning. A good pilot is always learning. You should remember this sentence. What sets pilots, airline pilots apart, in my opinion, is the will to go deeper than just surface knowledge that you are given as part of your training. Okay. From time to time, you will be reading your FCOM, which stands for Flight Crew Operations Manual, your FCTM, Flight Crew Techniques Manual, your Ops Manual, Operations Manual, and you will be finding information that is just not talked about usually. And that information is always good to know because it will make you better, more technical, and just more at ease when you're, when you're performing flights, okay? Now, there's tens of thousands of pages of these three manuals combined, and it is impossible to commit it all to memory. That's where it comes in to just do it from time to time and having a notebook where you just log everything that is important so that you can come back later and actually learn that knowledge when you have time, okay? So, knowledge is something that is just acquired through repetition and having that on a notebook will make it easier for you to be able to access it instead of having to open the FCOM completely, look up the information, the FCTM, look up the information, etc., etc. You're making it easy for yourself and you're making it more fun in a way for you to just keep learning when you have nothing else to do, where you have some free time and you make it easy. Making it easy and accessible will make you more motivated to actually look up that information and get better yourself. Quick recap. To summarize, you should have a good educational background, science and math focused if possible. Second, you should have an excellent flight training from a good and reputable school which gives you a solid foundation as an airline pilot. Number three, a good airline pilot is a team player. Number four, you have leadership skills, okay? You are assertive and you can make decisions in a timely manner. Number five, you are situationally aware of your environment and of your aircraft. Number six, you are able to reconcile manual control and automation and switch between the two as seamlessly as possible. Number seven, you know your standard procedures, memory items, and you know how to implement them properly. Number eight, you understand your aircraft technically, you understand your systems, and you are aware of the effects of procedures and the checklist that you apply. Number nine, you know your role, and that allows you to share tasks effectively as a crew. Last but not least, number 10, you read and you log new information you come across to become better and more knowledgeable over time. Now, in today's world, we have iPads, we have all this technology which makes it a lot easier to fetch information. But at the end of the day, you should always have a trusty little flip notebook in which you put in quick information that you can access because you never know when you might need to pull out information really quickly. Your iPad can run out of battery, etc. Always think backup plan. Thank you for watching the video. That was Flight JV. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or if you want me to develop on any one of these skills or signs, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try to make a video on that. Thank you for watching. Flight JV forever.